Nalla Narsimharindi Education Society's Group of Institutions Integrated Campus. Approved by AICT, New Delhi and affiliated to JN2 Hyderabad. This is Dr. G. Subaro, Professor, Department of Civil Engineering. In this uh, session, I am going to explain about uh, petrology, especially igneous rocks and uh, its importance from civil engineering point of view. Let us uh, start uh, the topic petrology in which igneous rocks and its importance. Petrology the study of rocks in all their aspects means mineralogies, textures, structures, origin and uh, their relationship to other rocks is called as petrology. So once again, petrology means the study of rocks in all their aspects means mineralogy, textures, structures, origin and uh, their relationship to other rocks is called as petrology. Rocks are divided according to their origin into three groups. They are igneous rocks, for example, granite, cyanide, charnocite, gabbro, dolerite, rhyolite, etc. Sedimentary rocks, shale, sandstone, limestone, etc. And metamorphic rocks, quartzite, marble, cyst, slate, etc. So now, let us start about igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are usually, they are massive, unstatified, unfossiliferous and uh, occurs of course as intrusions. Igneous rocks are formed when hot molten rock material called magma solidifies. Otherwise, igneous rocks form through the cooling and crystallization of molten rock material. Igneous rocks are classified based on three parameters. One is silica percentage. Another one is silica saturation and the third one is depth of formation. Let us see classification based on silica percentage. Based on silica percentage, the igneous rocks are considered as acidic igneous rocks, intermediate igneous rocks, basic igneous rocks, ultrabatic basic igneous rocks where the silica percentage is clearly shown. In case of acidic igneous rocks, the silica percentage is more than 65 percent. In case of intermediate igneous rocks, the silica percentage is between 55 to 65 percentage and basic igneous rocks in which the silica percentage is 45 to 55 percent. However, ultrabatic basic igneous rocks which are characterized by less than 45 percent of silica percentage and uh, the important rocks are shown as example in the picture. This is SiO2 percentage according to SiO2 percentage on one side and the type of rock is shown here. In case of rhyolite, the SiO2 percentage is increased like anything, followed by dacite, andesite, basalt. That means SiO2 percentage decreases in basalt. And similarly, TiO2, Al2O3, FeO, MnO, MgO, CaO, Na2O, K2O, P2O are also shown in the diagram. 
now classification based on silica saturation this has been categorized in two three types over saturated igneous rocks when the parent magma is rich in silica feldspars so that i mean feldspars and silica crystallizes as quartz and the minerals like olivine nephelin lucite never occur in over saturated rocks we can consider granite diorite granodiorite dacite rhyolite as examples for over saturated igneous rocks granite diorite rhyolite are shown in the picture similarly dolerite basalt can be seen in the picture kimberlite it is a famous uh, rock igneous rock where we can find the occurrence of diamonds and classification based on silica saturation when parent magma has enough silica for the formation of minerals then the resulting rocks possess neither quartz nor any minerals like nephelin lucite prints of feldspars are seen especially in case of cyanite anorthosite diorite gabbro rocks gabbro cyanite rocks are shown in the picture classification based on silica saturation unsaturated igneous rocks quartz is possible and feldspars olivine nephelin lucite are present dunite peridotite phonolite are best examples for unsaturated igneous rocks so all these rocks are classified based on silica saturation dunite is shown in the film similarly classification based on depth of formation in case of depth of formation that means by considering the mode of occurrence igneous rocks may be either intrusive can call it as plutonic igneous rocks otherwise extrusive igneous rocks that means volcanic igneous rocks or hypabisal rocks so according to depth of formation igneous rocks are divided into three categories as plutonic rocks hypabisal rocks and volcanic rocks table shows granite granodiorite cyanite diorite anorthosite nephelin cyanide dunite charnakite are the best examples for plutonic igneous rocks whereas dolerite tingoite chalcolite kimberlite pegmatite are mentioned under hypabisal igneous rocks whereas rhyolite dacite trachyte andesite basalt phonolite olivine basalt nephelin basalt pitch stone are mentioned under the category of volcanic igneous rocks this is the tabular classification of igneous rocks where three parameters are shown based on saturation that means over saturated saturated under saturated and based on silica percentage which has shown at the bottom of the table and based on depth that means mode of occurrence Uh, these are mentioned as plutonic igneous rocks hypabisal igneous rocks volcanic igneous rocks all these three parameters are clubbed in a single table and accordingly the rocks are mentioned as per their characteristic features plutonic rocks the igneous rocks which have formed under high temperature and pressure at greater depths in the presence of volatiles in the earth crust are called as plutonic igneous rocks greater pressure ensure the crystallization of minerals so that all the minerals crystallize the net result of all these processes is the development of 
coarse grained texture. Hence, the rocks which comes under plutonic igneous rocks are characterized by coarse grained texture. These are the best examples granite, kimberlite, granodirite, pegmatite, diorite, anarthosite, gyapro, peridotite, junite, chornakite. It is called as hypersthene granite where pyroxene is dominant in chornakite, which is a type of igneous rocks. Volcanic rocks. The igneous rocks which have formed under low temperature and pressure at shallow depths in the absence of volatiles in the earth crust are called as volcanic rocks. Due to rapid cooling and quick crystallization of lava makes solidification faster and due to heat difference. So the net result of all these process, what happens? Fine grained texture develops. We can take basalt rhyolite as best examples for volcanic igneous rocks. Coming to another category, so here andesite, trachyte, rhyolite, basalt are shown. Similarly, basalt we can sometimes notice the Vesicles, if they are present, are characterized by some of the secondary minerals, for example, zeolite and calcite. So, in such a case, we can say that uh, the basalt is exhibiting amygdaloidal structure. And this is columnar giants can be seen in basalts due to rapid cooling. Tension cracks develop. And these cracks are polygonal in shape and vertically extended downwards. These openings are called columnar giants. The rock in such a case is said to have columnar structure. Now let us uh, study about hippobyssal igneous rocks. These rocks are intermediate solidified rocks in between volcanic and plutonic igneous rocks forming at medium pressure and medium temperature. Pegmatite, dolerite, and kimberlites are example for hippobyssal rocks. Dolerite and dolerite uh, occurs as an intrusion that is a dike. Chalcolite are shown in the picture. What is the importance of igneous rocks? Let us study about the importance. Igneous rocks due to weathering give rise to sediment rocks. Further, under the influence of metamorphism, these igneous rocks also give rise to orthometamorphic rocks, gneisses and amphibolites. Igneous rocks are used as a stone for buildings and statues. The study of texture, structure, Mineral composition, chemical composition, etc., gives necessary information regarding the strength of the rock, durability of the rock, color, appearance, and workability. Hence, study of texture, structure, mineral composition, chemical composition must be studied by the civil engineers. These inherent characters of rocks are of chief concern for a civil engineer to access the suitability occurring at the project site for the purpose which is intended. The weathering and erosion of igneous rocks also produces very rich and productive soils for growing things. So igneous rocks are very very important uh, in agriculture sector also. Granite, of course it is very hot, competent, durable and free from weak planes are suitable for foundation purposes. This granite is also used as aggregate for making concrete, road metal, flooring, slabs. Granite is also used both in building construction and also for making statues. It is also a popular choice for kitchen countertops. Granite looks good when it is polished and is often used for the facets of buildings. 
Direct was used extensively by ancient civilizations for vases and other decorative artwork and is still used for art today. And uh, peridotai is sometimes mined for peridot, a type of olivine that is used in jewelry. You can see the uh, olivine crystals. Pumice, which is commonly used as an abrasive and uh, which is generally used to remove dead skin, especially from the bottom of the foot. Ground up pumice stone is sometimes added to toothpaste to act as an abrasive material to scrub teeth also. Basalt, another side, is one of the important igneous rock to form the oceanic crust. Of course, basalt can be a rich source of iron and it is commonly used as an ingredient of concrete. Nephilim cyanide is used in the industrial sector where refractories, glass making, ceramics, pigments and fillers where it is used. Pegmatite is often mined for industrial minerals. Large scale of mica sheets are mined from pegmatites. Pegmatites are important because they often contain